Hello everybody! In the previous video of this series we discussed how to make money in Crusader Kings 3, while in this video we will discuss the complex argument of marriage that was required by 4EX in the comment in the previous video. Marriage is mainly used to have childs in order to continue your own dynasty and let them heredit your lands and titles. But this is only one part of the story. In fact, you also can marry your own family members or even arrange marriage between your courtiers. The main reason why you need to do this is to get more childs in your court, then later on can be educated in order to maximize their skills. This is needed to empower your council by assigning there the most skilled people. As a result, this will maximize the benefits of their passive and active abilities. But we are actually only scratching the surface of this argument. So let's start to go more in deep in each aspect of this topic. Let's start from the basics. In order to marry your own character, you need to click on your image in the bottom right corner where you can use the Find Spouse interaction by clicking on the empty slot on the left to respect to you. Or in case it is available, to click on Add a secondary spouse in the Family tab. In alternative, you can right-click yourself in order to use the Find Spouse in the Diplomacy section. That will open the Arrange Marriage tab, where you can browse all the spouses you can take. The problem now is, if you will start scrolling the list, you will find out that it is too long to check all the candidates. So you need to decide how exactly you want to use in your realm the spouses you take. For the mind spouse, you need to look at your skills and check which are poor. This way, you can assign your spouse to improve your own skills. Each skill has its own bonuses and maluses based on how much you are skilled in it. For example, by having a spouse with high stewardship in case you assign her to manage the domain, this will increase your taxes and domain limits. Plus, she can trigger some special events that give you bonuses like tourney day, that will increase each of your knights' opinion of you by 20 or give you some prestige. In other cases, the events can be even passive, for example extra taxes, lifestyle experience and others. Therefore, it is really important that you will choose the mind spouse mainly based on her skills. And to do so is enough to click on specific skill icon to sort your spouse candidates by the skill you want to improve. But don't worry if you already have a spouse but she isn't the best to help you. In fact, in this case, you still can change her by getting a concubine or require a divorce if your type of religion and government allow it. Otherwise, the only way to change your spouse is to murder her with the specific intrigue scheme. Back to the concubine, you can right-click her and use Make as primary spouse in order to assign her to this role. Another use of concubines is to get more legitimized childs. This is mainly needed to be sure to get at least one male heir that after your death will inherit your territories therefore maintaining the integrity of your realm after the succession. In case you are worried about having more than one heir, considering that when you will die the territory usually splits between them, you don't have to, because before you die you can disheredit all heirs, leaving only the one you want to become the next ruler, which one will inherit each holdings and titles you own. But in reality this is slightly more complex argument. In fact, the succession and dynasty topics will be discussed in another video in this playlist, which link you can check in the description. Another factor you have to consider while choosing your spouse and concubines is your dynasty. This is because if done right, each succession you can get a ruler with better skills. In this case you have to prioritize the congenital traits, because childs have a small probability to inherit them. The main three categories are the Bright Minds, Beautiful Characters and Physical Specimen Groups, that in case you will be able to combine them in one child, after he becomes the new ruler you will be able to straighten your dynasty bloodline using its specific decision, that will permanently give any member of your dynasty the strong blood bonus that will massively rise the chance for any new child in your dynasty to inherit their parents' good traits and even create new ones, without speaking about the small health boost as well. 
So, one of the main objectives while you decide who to marry is their inherited traits as well. In fact, if you want to see only the spouses that have this type of bonuses, you need to go in the toggle filters and choose to see only candidates that have inheritable traits. Speaking about general aspect of the marriage, there is a fertile factor that decides if you have a higher or lower chance to get child. That is based on your traits, bonuses and age. So, be sure to take some poses that can give you a new hair. Otherwise, you will lose a game if you die without any hair that will take your titles. To finish while marrying yourself, keep an eye on the prestige loss and gain despite is a minor bonus or malus. This is because sometimes if you choose a less influential spouse you will lose some prestige. While if her parents are more influential than you, you both will receive extra prestige. Speaking about your hairs, they also can be married and you can decide in advance the spouse you want to have before your son will take control of your territories. This is also needed to increase the chance to get more childs, considering that the younger characters are more fertile. In fact, if your religion and culture allow you to divorce or have concubines, you can prioritize the inheritable traits for your spouse. Then just switch the main spouse to the one that has better statistics, when your son will become the new ruler. But in meanwhile, the previous spouse will probably already give him a few decent hairs with good inheritable traits. The other childs of your family, in particular the female, can be used for another purpose. Mainly, when any of your family members will marry, they can grant you some alliances with other rulers. This is needed for several important reasons. The first is to allow you to call at war your alliance army, that will help you to win wars easier. Or better to prevent losing them if the enemy army is more powerful than yours. This can be used how in the conquest wars, how in the defensive one. Therefore, alliances are similar to having a mercenary army that you can hire at any moment using your prestige instead of gold. The only disadvantage on like using mercenaries is that you can't control their army during a war that sometimes can be a problem. Another good reason to have powerful alliances is to prevent your enemies from declaring wars with you, in particular if you have a smaller army than theirs. Also in some cases you can even receive an invitation to join their wars. That is a great opportunity to make money and prestige without any investment to start a war and risk of losing it. In case you want to learn more about making money thanks to the war, you can check the previous video about this topic linked in the description. A little tip, try to get alliances that are close to your territory, otherwise they will take too much time to travel to you when you ask their help. Plus, if they will call you to war, you have to send your troops too far away from home, making it more expensive and put at risk your own territory if someone will declare a war on you. Also, in case your child will marry someone too close to your territory, you have to keep in mind that until the father will die you can't easily declare war on them, because in this case you will lose your own family member's opinion and a lot of prestige, without speaking about the loss of a level of fame that is even worse. But once the father will die, you can use your new family members in order to declare war to this territory using their claims. To finish with the marriage of your child, you need to be careful, because if you marry a female, she will be transferred to the male spouse court. Therefore, you will lose a child, but in exchange the alliance with them will last for more time. But if you want to keep your daughters and gain new court members that usually will also become knights, you need to check the matrilinear box. This will make the spouse of your daughters change his house to yours. Therefore, all his childs will be born in your dynasty as well. But in this case, not all of the rulers will accept to give away their childs only in exchange for your alliance. Another thing to know about the marriage topic is that you can even marry your own court members. In fact, you can switch the family tab to the court. Otherwise, to check more details, you can open the court tab, where you will find your physician, some guests and normal courtiers. 
In general, each court member has a small chance to leave your court if their opinion of you is low, while they won't do so if their opinion on you is high. To increase it, you can just organize some fests and hunts. Anyway, one of the most important members of your court is a physician that will think about your whole court life care, boosting your own, your family and your courtyard's health, while the guests are temporary courtiers that will stay for at least 10 years, then after a while they will leave. To finish, the courtiers are members of your own court that you can use in order to educate child, assign them as counselors and knights. Also, in case some of them become really skilled, you can even uh, grant them some titles, making them your vassals. That will allow you to control better your territories. So, it is really important to have as many skilled court members as possible, in particular because over time some of them will die. Therefore, if they were the most skilled counselor of the specific field, it is really important to have a decent substitute ready to take their position. There are different ways to get new courtiers. The first is to recruit uh, to your court your own guest you have. In case you didn't have any, you can use the invite knights and climates decision that will bring some of them to your court. Based on the guest skills, house and claims, they can cost more or less gold to recruit. Another way to get new courtiers is to marry your own one. In this case you have two choices. The first is to marry them to someone outside of your kingdom. This will bring them to your court if your member is male. But in case of a female, you will lose her. To solve this problem is enough to check for them the multilinear box. The other way is to marry your own court members between each other. A little tip, if you will sort the candidates by skills, you can get the most skilled counselors really easy thanks to the marriage of your own court members. Anyway, once they are married, they can bring to your court even more members that are their child that automatically will join your court. Then, based on the childhood traits, you can assign a specific word to them in order to hugely improve their skills. As a result, when they become adults, they will be really powerful and skilled courtiers, that later on can even replace the best counselors you have, improving the power of your council skills. Another use of marriage between your courtiers is to take and keep in your court some of the inherited traits. This way, later on, you can use their child to marry your own heirs in order to make it easier obtaining the straightening bloodline for your dynasty. When doing so, be careful to not marry your own family members for mistake, because the child of this marriage can gain massive negative traits as well. But in some rare cases, you can get the powerful poor blood trait instead considering that in long term you need to get it for your dynasty because it decreased by 50% the inbreeding chance, therefore it will hugely decrease the chance to get negative traits from marrying your own family members. To finish this factor of decreasing the negative traits gain, it can further be boasted with your legacies that we will discuss at the end of this video. From the general aspect of the marriage, when you try to get married or marry any member of your family or court, there is a probability that the marriage won't be accepted, for example, if the recipient desire or not to have an alliance with you, or how high is the opinion of the recipient and the candidates has on you and the own person that has to be married. Another really important factor is the level of the splendor of the person to be married compared to the candidate. But the most important malus is if the multilinear marriage enabled or not. Plus there are other minor factors. Some of external factors that can highly change the standards are the perks you can find in several lifestyles. The first is the defensive negotiation in the diplomacy lifestyle that will allow you to make alliances without need to marry your family members. That combined with other alliances, thanks to the marriage, you can hugely boost your diplomacy skills thanks to the next perk called Embassies. While to increase the marriage acceptance, you can unlock the last trait of this tree that will give you the diploma trait, increasing by 20 the opinions that other rulers have of you. Another tree in the diplomacy lifestyle that can help you 
with marriage acceptance is the family hierarchy. Here, starting from the befriend perk, that will unlock the friendship scheme, allowing you to make friends relationship with other rulers that own the childs you want to join your court, thanks to the marriage. Considering that friends relationship helps to increase the opinions they have on you, that can be further boosted thanks to the flatterer perk that will raise the scheme power by 30 points. While with the friendly console you even will gain 2 random skill points for each friend you made. To finish with the diplomacy lifestyle we have the patriarch perk, that not only will raise the opinion by 10 of any members of your house, making it easier to get better marriage candidates, but has also other powerful benefits. While speaking about you and your family, if you want a huge boost in marriage acceptance, you can unlock the promising prospect perks from the Gallian tree in the Martial lifestyle. In some other cases the problem is also the different fate and culture. In this case you can solve the problem thanks to the open-minded and apostate perks from the scholar tree in the learning lifestyle. Other bonuses that can help with the marriage can be found in the dynasty legacies. The most powerful of which is a desirable match from the glory tree that will boast by massive 30 points the marriage acceptance. Well, to help you to get new courtiers and make them easier to get in your court, you can unlock the vibrant court from the erudition tree that will bring to your court more skilled guests and increase their and your other court members' opinion on you. But to unlock these legacies, you need to get a lot of renown that can be accomplished if you are the house head and your dynasty has a lot of members and they have important titles.